All right, guys, it is 7.22 p.m., September 17th, 2017. I am sorry I took so long today. I basically had to pack two weeks of my life into one day. But you know what? This is uh, sacrifices we make to do this stuff. I love doing this. I love being here to help you guys. Um, so here we are. Uh, we are tracking Jose. We are tracking Maria. And Lee, as of right now, is a tropical depression. So that is uh, some good news to start with. Um, the last thing we need is to see another storm behind Maria, which is uh, being considered, uh, it's going to be a monster. This storm is forming quickly. It's getting stronger every hour. Uh, I have some satellite video pulled up of it real quick. I'll share with you guys. Uh, just to give you an idea of how quickly this thing's forming, like over a six-hour period, we went from tropical storm to category one uh, with gusts of up to 96 miles an hour, I saw. There was one gust that said 94 296. It had a dash in it, but uh, sustained winds as of right now are 75. Um, expect those to raise in the next uh, update um, as far as the, the Hurricane Center updates. Uh, I think they do uh, 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and then 5 p.m., so that gap between 11 and 5, you should expect a lot of changes, but they keep talking about how quickly this thing's widening and how big it's getting. It's basically covering the entire spot from like St. Thomas all the way down to the Lesser Antilles. So this is a very big storm. You can see this area here just exploding. And basically from now on until this storm dies out, you're going to see at least that big red dot here. And that's, uh, we've talked about this. This is that center cone uh, pushing that wind way up into the air, and those clouds are exploding on top of it. And when that happens, that's when the clouds on the outside start to form and spin. And I'm, uh, within the next 12 hours, we're going to see very, very significant bands from this storm. And that's why we have watches and all these warnings going on with the islands. Once again, those poor people have yet another major hurricane to deal with. They don't know exactly where it's going to go yet. The models are consistent as far as uh, a path similar to Irma, similar to what they thought Irma was going to do. Remember, when Irma got about to this area, we had a very big break in the jet stream. I was telling you guys how the jet stream keeps a, uh, a pretty decent shape of an upper U, and then it drops down to a lower, and it's kind of like that sort of pattern all the way across, at least for the U.S. and the Atlantic Ocean. But just as Irma was getting here and was expected to try to hug the east coast of Florida, we had this break in the jet stream and it formed this wall. If you can see my mouse here, I'm working on a mouse, an icon thing for a mouse, guys, just so you know. I'm really sorry about that uh, for the people using cell phones and the tablets, some of the smaller tablets. I'm working on it. Uh, so again, these models are very consistent. They're tight. And they got this thing coming up the east coast as of right now. Uh, the European model, as of today, has this thing making landfall at the same time, New Jersey, New York City, and Long Island, all at the same time as of today. Now, if you guys remember, we showed the model, which I'm going to bring up in a minute. It showed Jose and Maria doing that little dance, and that's still not out of the question because all the models are agreeing on Jose making that loop now, if you can see here. Uh, it's pretty dramatic. A lot of the models are staying the same. We do have some showing it catching the jet stream and pulled out. That was the original forecast for Jose. But again, guys, things change. Uh, we do have these stubborn European models that are still showing this tight loop uh, just under Long Island and the east side of Connecticut, Massachusetts. So what we want to see here and what we hope to happen is for Jose to stay on a north pattern, no more shifting to the west. We don't want to see that. Uh, we don't know yet. Uh, the satellite, at least in my opinion, in the last couple frames, has shown a little jerk towards the east coast, and that's why these models aren't totally agreeing, and I'm assuming that's why the European models have this loop being uh, happening here rather than these models like this. And again, the European models are the ones that... Uh, basically correctly predicted Irma. So a lot of people are watching those models and they're trusting them. So again, guys, this is why they're keeping these areas under that watch. Basically from the Chesapeake Bay all the way up into Massachusetts or under tropical storm warnings. Uh, that's mostly for the um, the beach erosion that's going to be going on, the surf, the, the waves and stuff. A lot of these beaches, guys, if you've uh, visited them before, um, I'm a frequent visitor of Montauk, especially. The Montauk beaches are very, very flat. 
you don't have that pitch where you walk down to the ocean. Uh, they're very flat, and then about four or five feet up, you start having your docks and then the road. There's actually an area in near Montauk called Ditch Plains that's actually a big ditch in the island. So it's basically below sea level parts of it, and there's a channel that goes right into it. So if there's significant water flow, we're talking flooding. And that's the main concern, guys. It's not so much the wind. Even though as Jose gets into this area of cool water, the clouds expand. So that expands the wind radius of this storm. Again, we're hoping it drops down to a tropical storm and possibly even lower. So again, the main concern for these areas is going to be the coastlines, uh, the beaches, and then those red reservoirs that go from the beaches inland. Those are the things people are going to be concerned about. I'm going to be reporting on some of those uh, in specific areas as Jose gets closer. But again, we have our European models doing this, bringing it right into New Jersey, hopefully being a very weak storm at that point. But the thing with this turn, guys, is what we showed yesterday with um, uh, Maria and Jose doing that little dance thing. And that's not out of the question yet because the models are all agreeing on this loop of Jose. So once again, here are those type models of uh, Maria. Um, some of them have it going, doing a little zigzag. If you guys remember, we had that corkscrew deal going on, and we were worried about that because it would just keep it in the warm water longer. But apparently that's not really making a difference because of the speed that this storm is growing. Just look at this one explosion. This happens over an hour and a half, maybe two hours. That's massive right there. Uh, we're at category one. I told you the winds or the pressure drop from 994 to 982. That's a quick drop in that amount of time. So that's why they're keeping such a close eye on this storm. Um, over here with Jose, we do still have our dense eye here. It did look like it split up into two pieces, which um, would have been a good thing because that kind of meant that the shear winds were doing their job and breaking it apart. But in these next couple frames, you can see it kind of comes back together. And then you can kind of see what I'm talking about with this little bit of a shift towards the coast. Right towards the last couple frames. If you see my mouse here, it's off and then it touches it. So that's a little bit of a shift. It could be just some of the bands going that way. But again, that's why they're watching this storm so closely. That's why I'm watching it. Um, I'm in New York, so of course I'm watching this storm very closely. All right, and here are the models for Tropical Tidbits. Now, this is where it gets pretty interesting. GFS and the Europeans are not agreeing so much on this turn. Here is GFS. That's Jose. And if you can see, Jose almost clips Massachusetts. So we are talking, there's no doubt there's going to be effects as far as the beaches go here. But then what happens after that is basically a stop. It's stop short and then comes straight back down almost uh, southeast in or southwest direction and that's why I brought up the the part of these two meeting each other again because it's not out of the realm of possibility in this uh, model actually it's showing Jose getting pulled into Maria um, as one storm not making it a stronger storm but just uh, Jose being weak enough to be influenced by this storm and then we gotta watch Maria Maria is gonna be a big big deal coming up uh, because of these models. These models are all agreeing that this thing's coming right up the east coast, but we want this jet stream to push it out, and that's what we're hoping for. The GFS is relying on that. You can see the loop here. Um, if you notice, this high loop is what's over us right now, and that's what's causing the, like, the little heat wave we're having right now. It was very hot today. Uh, not many clouds, at least that I saw, but they're timing this, and they think that this low U of the jet stream is going to get to the east, the northeast coast, just as Maria's getting there, and that's why the GFS is showing this getting kicked out before it really does much damage. Now, if this thing stays at this size where it's showing here, this will affect the coast probably more than Jose will being in here, just to show you the difference in power of these storms. So again, there it shows it getting pulled out, but now I want to show you what the European model shows. Much closer to the coast, and also Jose being much closer to the coast. And again, the European models are what got Irma right, so this is why we're worried about these changes. So uh, people saying that like New York City and these areas are in the clear, no one's in the clear in the northeast right now. This is going to produce a lot of weather, a lot of uh, coastal stuff going on, just not stuff that's good. It's going to be really soggy and wet. Uh, four or five days, and then just as that's breaking, according to the models, that's when Maria's making its approach. So we uh, may be diving right into fall as far as the northeast goes. Uh, this might be our last week of nice weather, guys, unfortunately. 
But there we have it. That's the Europeans showing this thing touching New Jersey, uh, basically New York City, all of Long Island, and then into Massachusetts. Um, that will affect parts of Connecticut, maybe not as much. Maybe that exposed part, uh, the southeast part of Connecticut that's exposed to the water, that will get some sort of storm surge. Maybe nothing crazy, but again, just the concern with those channels and the coast. And now... As we move forward in this, this shows Jose making a dead stop and then coming down sooner than the GFS. And that's why we're concerned about these two storms still possibly meeting and spinning around each other. And what that does is it doesn't cause so much as a bigger storm. It just makes them move quicker. So we might be dealing with higher winds. Again, this may change. Maria's still far out. But the fact that all these models are very consistent on the east coast is what's concerning. And then as we get towards the end of this model, it's showing... Almost direct landfall in New Jersey, and then clearly it'll go up to the city, Long Island, clearly affecting parts of the Chesapeake Bay. More storm surge, more water, and this is just after Jose is lingering around here for three or four days. So just to give you an idea of the weather we're going to be dealing with. So we're going to keep an eye on Maria. Maria's a big deal. Jose still could be a big deal. Uh, we're, again, we're relying on that cold water to really weaken this thing and uh, just... Just lower the impact, guys. This is... We just don't need any more of this. I think everyone's tired of hurricane season. We've had our share. And I hope it's another 10 years before we see something like this. But again, this model still shows remnants of Lee out here. Uh, it is uh, possible for Lee to reform if it stays west and low. Uh, we just don't know yet. And there you have it. That's the uh, European model saying that Jose is going to come do its loop inside this this area here, as opposed to out here where we want it to go, and then going closer to Chesapeake Bay. The, uh, the GFS had it doing its loop here, and then possibly going into New Jersey. So once again, I'll just run through this. We'll see Maria. And that's what we're dealing with, guys. This is still, according to this chart, a major hurricane by the time it gets here. So we're talking very little effect with the cold water, especially because the Gulf Stream is so high right now. The Gulf Stream is almost up to the south tip of New Jersey. That's very high. That's a lot of warm water. All right. We'll take a look real quick at... All right, well, here's Lee's spaghetti models. Most of them have it shooting up into the Atlantic and then fizzling out. One of them has it staying a little bit more south. I don't think it'll be anything to really worry about, at least for now. Here's our timeline with Lee. Again, probably not a big worry at this point. And then finally, we'll look at our wind map. Uh, here is that front that I'm talking about, that it, the pressure that's keeping Jose towards the east coast. So we want to keep an eye on this. You can see part of it wrapping over top, and that may be the reason why Jose stays off the coast. We just don't know yet. That's why we're watching. And then you got Maria here. Um, had not been for these last couple frames, looking at this, it almost looks like it wasn't even going to form, and then out of nowhere, this storm just exploded. Guys, I would not be surprised to see Maria turn into a Cat 5. I know no one wants to hear that, but it just the, the movements it's making, how quick it's forming... Um, at least a Cat 3. I mean, this thing will be a Category 3, and it's happening quickly, too. So that's what we need to watch out for. And some of the models, uh, there is another wave of storms coming off of Africa. Again, that doesn't mean they're going to form. Uh, we do have shear winds constantly here. That's what makes or breaks hurricanes. We want those shear winds to rip these storms apart. That is what happened with Maria early on. It formed, and then it broke up, and then reformed again. So those shear winds basically did its job, but then they let up. And Maria was strong enough to keep its core, guys. And that's what we have for right now. Again, Jose, Maria, and then Lee, Tropical Depression. Um, guys, I will have a much more updated update for you uh, in the morning. If anything significant happens before then, I will be here. Just a very busy day. I wish I could have been here sooner with you guys. It just didn't work out. But that's where we're at right now. So we are watching closely, Jose. Uh, and Maria is blowing up, guys. So we need to watch these islands. We need to get those warnings out. Uh, hurricane warnings and watches all the way up and down Leeward Islands. Uh, Puerto Rico, I think, is on that list. Obviously, St. Thomas, Barbuda. All those areas that were impacted by Irma are once again in the path of another major hurricane. All right, guys, that's it for now. I will be back, and we will talk later tonight or definitely in the morning. Thanks a lot.